In Africa, images are circulating of magnetized arms after getting the jab. False information like this might be one reason why expecting mothers don't get inoculated. I won't take it to make sure it won't kill me. I'm pregnant. I don't want to bring problems to my baby. In Europe and America, many expectant mothers are also reluctant to get the jab. In Britain, just over 10% of pregnant women had been fully vaccinated by the end of August, compared to 74% of the general public. What's behind the vaccine hesitancy of mums-to-be around the world? I'm Ben Fazul and welcome. Looking out for myself during this pandemic has been tough enough. Looking out for another little person growing inside must be a real challenge. Early on in the crisis, there wasn't much data on the effect of the virus and then the effect of the vaccine on pregnant women. Now there is. And it's important because in the last months, rates of pregnant women hospitalised with COVID have risen significantly in many places, including the UK. But rates of vaccination among mums-to-be remain low, partially due to conflicting information. UK resident Kelsey Rounce was 29 weeks pregnant when she got sick with COVID-19. Doctors induced a coma, and when she woke, her son had already been delivered. She hadn't gotten the coronavirus vaccine. If anyone was told that they would be put into a coma and potentially dying, I think you'd probably consider it a lot more. Um, but I, yeah, I, I think I'm, I'm going to get it now. The UK's National Health Service says unvaccinated pregnant women now represent one in six hospitalizations due to COVID-19. Claire Bromley was also hospitalized with the virus and told she might have to deliver her baby via C-section at only 26 weeks, a dangerously premature age for delivery, one that can carry long-term consequences. I thought I was going to die and I thought he was going to die and we waited so long for this family that that was the greatest fear that my husband was going to lose us both. Now that they're both safely out of the hospital, she's urging other expectant moms to protect themselves against the virus. Pregnancy can be a confusing time with an abundance of opposing advice. Guidelines around the coronavirus vaccines have been no different, with some countries recommending the shots for moms-to-be and others advising against them. That's partially because pregnant women were excluded from vaccine trials as is standard practice for most medicines. Now, a growing body of data shows the benefits outweigh the risks for expectant mothers. There is a risk that you may get a more serious uh, form of uh, COVID. You may be admitted to the hospital. You can have the vaccine at any stage during pregnancy. We've got increasing amount of data that tells us that it does not increase the risk of miscarriage. It does not increase the risk of stillbirth. With the failure of medical science to send a clear message to pregnant women, there are growing calls for them to be included in the future of vaccine research. Asma Khalil joins us now from St. George's University Hospital Fetal Medicine Unit. There's been a lot of debate in recent months uh, and a, a lot of worried pregnant women, uh, but it's so much clearer now, uh, as far as the data goes, that they should get vaccinated. Why is this important? Um, it's important because um, COVID can cause severe illness during pregnancy. We know that pregnant women are twice as likely to need to be admitted to the intensive care unit if they get COVID compared to a non-pregnant adult. We also Why is know that, that... Can you explain COVID that? Uh, well, there's, a, there's a number of reasons, um, but certainly the immune system in pregnant women is different from the immune system when you're not pregnant and tends to be maybe uh, weaker, the immune system during pregnancy. But also don't forget that a heavily pregnant woman is more difficult um, for this woman to cope with a severe infection in the lungs or respiratory infection compared to a non-pregnant adult. A major concern that many women have probably revolves around less around themselves and more around the unborn baby. What's the current data and study results for COVID vaccines then uh, show for, for mother and baby? 
So um, COVID is not just causing severe illness to the mother, but also it increased the risk of um, premature births. And we know that prematurity increased the risk of disability. We also know that these women are more likely to develop high blood pressure in pregnancy. They're more likely to have a cesarean and delivery. And also there, some data suggests that the risk of stillbirths, that means the baby dying during the pregnancy, is higher compared to women who don't get COVID during pregnancy. So when's the best time for a pregnant woman to actually get vaccinated? Well, certainly the current um, recommendation is that ideally you want to get the post doses of the vaccine before the latter third of the pregnancy. That's 26 weeks. Because what we know is that um, if the pregnant woman get COVID, uh, the latter third of the pregnancy is more likely to be severe, it's more likely that uh, she needs to be delivered early and more likely to be admitted to intensive care unit. And are all COVID vaccines equally good for pregnant women? Um, I don't think we have data to be able to answer this question for all types of COVID vaccines. What we um, know that the mRNA vaccines, that's uh, Pfizer and Moderna, are effective and safe during pregnancy. And the reason for that is that most of the data that we have on COVID vaccine in pregnancy come from the United States, from Israel, from Canada, and from the United Kingdom. And in these countries, um, the recommendation is to have the mRNA vaccine during pregnancy. So this is where we have most of the data. Are there any reasons or individual cases, though, why pregnant women should not get vaccinated? Um, we don't have any um, data to suggest that the COVID vaccination is um, unsafe or potentially harmful to the mother or the baby. We know that it does not cause miscarriage or stillbirths or preterm births. And therefore, the current guidance is that all pregnant women should consider getting the vaccine during pregnancy. How do you convince them, though? Because, as you say, the data is there. We, we have this scenario so often during this crisis that we have hard and fast figures, but it, it, there are still so many people who are hesitant con, uh, and, and considering that it's not just one life at stake here, it's two lives at stake often. Um, how do you convince a pregnant woman then to take the vaccine? I think this is a really important um, question. And, uh, you know, I come across pregnant women on a daily basis. And when I have this conversation, I say you need to and make a choice. Um, if you get COVID, there is a risk that you um, you might really be very unwell. You need to be admitted to intensive care unit. There's risk to the baby, risk of, of delivering early, prematurity, baby needing to go to the special care baby unit. And the alternative is to get the vaccine. We know that the vaccine is effective. Um, pregnant women, when they get the vaccine, they develop antibodies, and also these antibodies crosses the placenta, so it could potentially protect the baby as well. And therefore, if you balance the risk and benefit, I think the balance is definitely towards getting the vaccine, because to the best of our knowledge, this is the best way to protect the pregnant woman and the baby. You heard it from Azwa Khalil, Fetal Medicine Unit at St. George's University Hospital. Thank you very much. Great to have you on the show today. Thank you for having me. And let me hand you over to Derek Williams, who has another viewer question, this time about getting a second jab. I had intense side effects after my first vaccine shot, so don't want a second. Am I at least somewhat protected? Trying to track the effectiveness levels over time of the around a dozen vaccines in wide use can really drive you around the bend. There's a mounting pile of studies on them and, and interpretations of those studies, many of them seemingly at odds. But as a general rule, the experts do agree that some protection against SARS-CoV-2 begins to kick in within a couple of weeks of receiving your first dose of a two-dose vaccine. But they also pretty much all agree that despite that, you really shouldn't skip your second dose because it's critical to boosting your antibody response to a whole different level. Now, the number often cited is that after shot number two, antibody levels against the virus climb to around 
10 times the number detectable after shot number one. Um, it's also thought that the second shot plays a major role in inducing what's called cellular immunity, um, which is a keystone of more long-term, robust protection. There is one situation where healthcare authorities in some countries say that receiving just a single shot is okay, which is when someone has had and recovered from COVID-19 before starting vaccination. Um, here in Germany, for example, um, the Institute in Charge of Disease Control says that if you had symptomatic COVID, you only need to get a single shot of vaccine after six months um, or starting after four weeks if, if your case was asymptomatic. But for pretty much everyone else, two shots are still essential because even if you have really heavy duty side effects, that second shot provides more effective, longer lasting protection. And also don't forget that in many places, um, proof of full immunization now makes your life a lot easier, especially if you wanna travel and, and with one dose, you're only halfway there. Finally, India administered its billionth COVID jab on Thursday. To celebrate, employees at a vaccine center in Bangalore created this floor display. Around three quarters of adults have had one dose, about a third are fully vaccinated, but hundreds of millions of Indians under 18 who make up some 40% of the population have yet to be vaccinated. Nice to have you along. Stay safe and see you again soon. Bye-bye.